Hi everyone, Christina Sky here, <laughs> and I have got a little reaction video for you today. Um, what was the title? We are going to be watching a little conversation with the grapevine. Um, it's called Should Black People Be Vegan? The grapevine, if you don't know what it is, it's a group of people that get together and they just discuss things. They may agree or they may disagree and it's all about communicating and opening up the discussions to things and today is should black people be vegan should black people be vegan let me answer that question before we start should black people be vegan yes all people who have access and the ability to be vegan should be vegan even I, i'm not talking about people who may be are like living in tribes or like you know the the snowy you know you know what i'm talking about and th those people there's desert islands all that kind of stuff yeah we get it animal maybe the o animal food sources maybe the only food sources that they have access to or the most or they may not be access much access to vegetables and fruits and stuff however us people like us in the western world mostly we live in very cushy lives where we can just go to the grocery store. I don't say grocery store, but today I'm saying grocery store. It's like a very American thing. But anyways, you can go to the supermarket and just grab your fruits, grab your veggies, even grab your fake vegan meats if you want to and chow down. So yeah. I feel like it depends on who these black people are. I, I If they're in a similar situation to me, I definitely think they should be vegan. And there's millions of people in a similar situation than me, or even a better situation than me. So we are very privileged and we have access to things that other people don't. So we should be doing our best to stop suffering of animals in the world and help the environment and also help our own health I guess <laughs> but yeah I'm gonna start watching the video now because I've been blabbering on we'll see if they can change my mind and see if maybe they don't think black people should be vegan I don't know what they're gonna say to be honest but I think I don't know if they if any of them are vegan so it may be a very closed conversation and if there's maybe only one or two vegans it may be still very close conversation because it's hard to get through to meat eaters a lot of time. <laughs> we'll see anyway. Hopefully they're very open-minded. Okay, let's watch. Hello and welcome to The Grapevine. I'm your host, Ashley Akuna. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about whether or not black people should go vegan. But before we get into it, I want to introduce you to my panel. Thanks for coming, everybody. Woo! Okay, so let's take a quick poll. Who on this panel is vegan? Okay, who on this panel is vegetarian? So we're off to a good start. There's already quite a few vegans in there. So we've got we've got a kind of balanced, sort of balanced panel here, which is kind of good. So we can at least hear both sides. Where the meat eaters at? <laughs> there's actually less meat eaters than there are vegans. And there's like one or two vegetarians. I like these. <laughs> I, 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 it would have been better if it was more. Maybe there's some behind the camera because I, I saw some people a bit further behind this shot. But good start, good start. I wanted to do this um, panel because there's a lot, there's a link between, you know, what you eat and your health. So I want to talk about, like, as a black people, we have a variety of issues, heart disease, you know, various cancers. Should we be looking at, you know, starting a non-meat, a meatless um, diet? Basically. No, no absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna go to Muscle Man Balarin in the back. 
Your head got muscles. From my personal experience, I will say that most people usually approach me and they say, well, your diet must be crazy and all that, not knowing that I go to sleep eating hot dogs and hot dogs in my mouth like hamburgers. I have a horrible, I'm just admitting I have a horrible, I don't use paws, I, I'm a, a hot dog, man, not a dick, a hot dog in my mouth. <laughs> There's no need for paws. A hot dog be hanging out my mouth. You know, Hebrew national is delicious. Uh -huh. But I say this to say, <laughs> a lot of people always approach me thinking that my diet is good, but it, it's it's horrible. Okay. My diet is horrible, and while I do think that there might there may be benefits to being a uh, you know all green, a vegan, what have you, I don't think we should be just go completely green. I think there's always uh, benefits of being proportionate. Like you shouldn't eat too much meat or too much greens and all, because you know you need everything, your protein, mm -hmm. what have you, your creatine mm -hmm. from meat uh, and all that stuff. So I'm just saying, <laughs> should we probably try to, you know, balance our diets more? Yeah, sure, you know, but mm -hmm. get rid of meat altogether? Nah, not yeah. me. I agree with the balance. A lot of us do not have even anything close to a balanced diet, but on a, on a, on a, on a vegan cruelty-free front, <laughs> Maybe on a diet front, I don't know, because I, I still don't know the, the science behind all of it. I I know that they say that vegan, whole whole food plant-based diet is healthier than a meat-based diet. So maybe there's also proof that, you know, you've got the Japanese people who live really old and they eat minimal bits of meat. They're more plant-based, but they eat a little bit of meat still. So... I mean, who knows? They haven't really tested it out, really. <laughs> They've done, actually they have. There's there's like the China study, there's a bunch of different studies and stuff. Um, and there was recently a study where a vegetarian ate meat for 30 days and a meat eater ate, veg not vegetarian, vegan for a, vegan went and ate, ate a carnivore diet for 30 days and a carnivore ate a vegan diet for 30 days and vegan turned out hell of a lot worse and the meat eater turned out a hell of a lot better in health wise so is it the lack of balance is it the fact that he cut out the meat i'll let you tell me <laughs> mm -hmm. no okay go ahead Bobo. <laughs> Um, so you winced when he said protein. Oh, <laughs> and he and shot right on. I think, I think of course there's seven billion people on this planet, so it's hard to tell everyone that there's one diet that's right for every single human being. Black but people. I think, well, well black people. Mm -hmm. But I think it is important to listen to your body instead of just taking in what the media tells you and what the government tells you, because everyone around us really doesn't have our interest at heart, especially as black people and all of the meats and the dairy products are they're so processed they have all types of chemicals and hormones in them and regardless mm -hmm. of whether or not meat does have protein which yes it does you're still consuming all of these unnecessary hormones mm -hmm. and chemicals and they not only affect you physically, so they so also true. affect you energetically, spiritually and your electromagnetic field which is why I'm vegan mm -hmm. which is because uh, sorry, I had to switch up my setup because my camera keeps overheating, so I have to do it in the streaming way. <laughs> because the energy transfer that happens when you kill an animal goes into your food and then into your body and into your consciousness and your mind, and that affects us as a black collective. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to be, as black people, conscious of what we're consuming physically but also energetically. So Thank you, Bobo. Wait, no, let me, let me, uh, let, yeah. me let me leave the conversation online. There was a point where I started like diving into the whole um, spiritual part of veganism, like the whole energy transfer thing. And I think around this time as well, I think a lot of people must have been talking about it, like absorbing the energy of the dead animals and stuff. Um, and I kind of agree, I'm not super like spiritual kind of person, but I think over time I've started to feel a bit more like, yeah, yeah, this makes sense. Because it's the same when you kind of interact with a person, you're, you're absorbing like their energy. So think about when you're eating stuff, you're absorbing the energy of the sun through plants. 
when you're eating animals, you're absorbing probably bits of the, the sun as well, but also you're eating a second-hand version of the nutrients that you would have got directly from the plant. And then also added on top of that is all the chemicals, and also added on top of that is all the freaking pain and suffering that the animal felt. And... It, it ain't great. Sorry, let me stop pausing. Go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Um, I'm gonna take it way back to when we were like children. Can you imagine sitting at like a dinner table and you tell your, your parents, oh, I'm not eating chicken because I'm gonna go vegan? Yes. <clears throat> you might get I smacked can. or you're not gonna <clears throat> eat. But that's disrespectful. Let, let him finish, let him finish. And I just feel like we're, we're like black people were programmed to like certain things or staples in our history and our culture. Chicken, you know, turkey, whatever, you know, if you're Jamaican, oxtail like and all soul that. Food as well. So it's like to give that up. The soul food is basically like the scraps of what the master didn't want to eat. It's like, I get it. Like, we should all do a better job of eating. And I definitely believe nowadays, like, the the food is like killing us slowly. Mm -hmm. So if any, we can, if we, we consume all this stuff on a daily basis, like milk and all that, like they feeding kids in school mm -hmm. and it's forced upon them. Mm -hmm. Think about how many milk commercials used to grow up on. Yeah, milk the whole got milk egg got killed milk. when people became more conscious of what we're eating and yeah. drinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think anything that we're that's being forced upon us at that magnitude, mm -hmm. and like we're kind of like programmed to think it's okay, like he said, um, protein, you know, meat. It's other proteins, mm -hmm. so we just got to be knowledgeable and like do some research. And I think you made a good point about being at the dinner table and saying like having a choice. You know, a lot of us, you know, we didn't have a choice on what we ate. We were just happy that there's food there. I think that's a great point. And then the ancestral thing, like, you know, go back to slavery. I wasn't in slavery, but mm -hmm. to go back to then, you know, we were just given food. They the were given food. Yeah. Yes. The trash. It's like, imagine if they said, oh, I'm not like, I, I, I just want some greens or something. Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a means of survival. But we're free now. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I'm with so you. Bad. I'm with you. I'm with you. Somewhat. Yeah. You're right. So, yeah. There also has to be like not um, just, just because you're vegan, you're not healthy. Um, you're just because you're vegetarian, you're pescatarian, you're not healthy. Um, I've several times I've gone vegan. I'm a meat lover. Like I've and so intentionally I've done it to see how my body would react. And for me, um, it's never quite worked out as well, which has made me recognize that not everybody, that not everything is for everybody. One. Should I lower the intake of meat? Absolutely, because one of the things that's ish, that's having that we're having an issue with with our food, and this is not only with meat. We tend to there's been this push that there's so many chemicals in meat, we forget what happens with plants as well, that's and true. how they're being raised to the point where they're so they're so tasteless because yeah. they're being the hormone the same hor the tip, similar hormones are being pushed into our um, our produce as well. All they're, the pesticides they are and colorless. All that kind of they're, well. they're 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 tasteless. They're also, all of these things are happening as well. All of our food is having we're having a major issue with food, and then we really have to get to a point where we have to like start pushing like legislation to. Mm -hmm. um, to really worry, to really consider our food as opposed to considering, as opposed to like kind of pushing various diets, we need to consider legislation to actually focus on how we grow our food, how we raise our food. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if they're going to get to it, but so far the conversation's just been about diet, whereas I feel like people always come with the wrong like thought pattern mindset towards veganism, thinking it's just about, oh, it's a new diet plan like it's not it's not about being a diet it's 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 a life it's is it would, would you call it a lifestyle it's a it's an ethical choice you make to live that way so that other animals don't have to suffer um for you to have a meal or to have a sandwich as they like to say so I don't know if there's like 50 minutes left this show. <laughs> I might have to make two parts of this. Um, but I feel like this, the conversation's only been focused on diet right now. And I think that hopefully they're going to make the conversation go more towards the ethics about of veganism. Because that's the main focus of veganism is to reduce suffering in all parts of life as much as possible. Like wearing fur and all this like fake mink eyelashes and mink brushes and leathers and all this kind of stuff it, it's also working on not using those things to kind of reduce animal suffering anyways let's let's see what they say also wanted to kind of talk about the um 
the difference between plant-based and vegan, how like even if you're vegan, a lot of them have sugar. Like for me personally, sugar is the issue for me. Like if I eat sugar, there'll be more of a problem with for me. And for most of them, that's literally my whole channel. <laughs> yeah, I, I realized as well, like when I went vegan, they doubly, like I already have a sugar issue. When you go vegan, most foods have extra sugar in them. At least when I went vegan. Now there's a lot, there's quite a few foods where it's like, they'll use, um, what do they use? They'll use ne nectars or syrups instead from like, so it's a bit less processed or they'll use like no sugar at all, which is fantastic for me because I can try stuff. <laughs> American sugar is a major issue, and it and then a lot of things that happen. A lot of this is um, consumer is consumer based or corporation based. So they'll push. So like uh, what was it? What the what the Macau. the health? They pushed that sugar wasn't the issue, but meat was, which was one of the biggest mis like was a very like was a very. Did they? To be honest, I watched What the Health once. I've watched a couple other documentaries and they always have the same people, but I just remember the the one guy, the, um, I don't remember his name. Oh. Anyways, if they said that, sugar is probably, health-wise, sugar is a much bigger issue, I feel like. Because mo majority of the time, any meal you have is mostly accompanied with sugar. Anyways, very sorry. serious issue to ever do because sugar has been proven to, to be addictive one and then two to actually have issues with your you cannot switch over you cannot leave me and then go to sugar it won't work yeah, yeah. um and with i think that that's something that also has to be recognized as well too mm -hmm. and even with like pastas and white rice exactly that everything that that's what i to like kind of touch on is how like a lot of the um, meat replacements tend to have like sugar or like gluten-based things in it and like soy. have to you have soy yeah, so. you have to be mindful yeah. of what's in it because it's like you can't yeah. just go vegan and then you actually have to probably go more into a plant-based diet as opposed to just it's not really much vegan. Yes, thank you. Go ahead, Jeff and then Jamir. I don't think is that, that the way black we make people it? should be forced or pushed to be completely vegan. I think black people should be forced to have better education around their health, what goes into their bodies, and also the conditions that make it so that why are we so sick? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll see the whole soul food debate about whether or not soul food is killing us, but you fail to recognize the socioeconomic uh, yeah. factors that contribute to the reason why poor people have to eat. Yes. Bullshit, yes. right? So you have to take all of that into consideration and really be educated on that in order to know where you want to go. Like for me, I believe in a balance, right? I try to eat... Uh, on the topic where he said about the poor people um, need to be able to eat what they're going to eat. Like, I remember seeing, sorry, I got itchy eye, a bunch of arguments that uh, vegans would make basically saying how fed peas and rice is cheaper than meat, so you can go vegan. However, a lot of times when you're like poor, you tend to be working a lot. I I'm just generalizing a kind of stereotypical working class but poorer working class person and they're not all like this this is just what I'm my example um a lot I feel like a lot of times they're they're working very hard multiple jobs sometimes and when you're thinking about food obviously when you're you're poor you want to find the cheapest option but also if you're working a lot, you want to find the most energetic option, the most calorific option. And a lot of times you're going to be buying vegetables or you're going to be buying sweets and uh, sodas and all this kind of stuff to give you the energy, the quick rush to keep you going through the day. And... Um, I feel like people, not enough people look into that and a lot of people just say, you're poor, you can eat beans and rice, that's vegan, you know? Whereas it's, it's not always that easy, especially if the people are not as educated on what they're eating. They just want to eat and throw something in their mouth and get to work or eat and look after their kids, eat and then go off their day and, you know, try and survive and live and make a living and all this kind of stuff. So probably didn't explain that very well but I just heard his point and I was like yeah 
I've noticed that a lot. And I think maybe even, have I even said it? Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I probably limited my consumption of meat. I ain't going back. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna Probably. go, I, I know myself, I can't go full vegan, but I do eat more greens. I do eat more plant-based uh, food and I try to be cognizant of what I'm eating. And I think that's really the start, but I don't think, I think it's more of a variety of factors than just meat bad, greens good. Yes, yes. <laughs> go ahead, Juice. Oh. I mean, Jameer, oh, Jameer, oh, sorry. Feel, but... Okay, <laughs> sorry. all right. Um, still I'm a, a vegetarian. Diet. I've been a vegetarian for a year. I was a pescatarian prior to that for six years. Um, but as I continue this journey, I'm a lot less hypocritical of people who eat meat because I've, I've, I've met people along the journey who's just been like, oh, if you eat meat, like, you trash, like, all this <laughs> shit. No, I'm, ser I'm serious, I'm serious. And it, it, people get shamed uh, about that, so I, I try to be less hypocritical. What it was for me that made me change was that I started seeing people who I love get sick and die of preventable diseases, Ooh, where all you had to do was just cut back on your intake mm -hmm. of all this soul food that we talk about. Because a lot of people just eat because of depressive states. And we don't know how much that, that, that food influences sure. our, our mental. Yeah. Food is a medicine, mm -hmm. right? And it Sugar definitely affects your brain, just, just so you know, sugar. It affects your brain. Make you act in ways that you never thought you would act. <laughs> if we eat fatty foods all the time, we start to see a change in how somebody acts. Mm -hmm. When I started eating more fruits and more vegetables, I started seeing an awakening process. I had more energy. I had more of an insight on life. I was more calm. So I realized that food was a really, really, really good medicine for me. And my intake of food soon mm -hmm. then changed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, what I want people to just really do, people who are vegan, people who are vegetarian, what I see is a lot of uh, just pointing a finger. Shaming. Yeah, and as black people, we ain't in no mood to be shaming nobody, especially if we're in a community that wants to persuade. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian or a pescatarian, you don't have to look down on people. There's an option, there's an opportunity for you to talk to somebody to get through to them without shaming them. Mm -hmm. I want people who eat meat to do is just understand where we're coming from. It's not like we're just shaming you just to shame you, but it's like we want to see more people alive. Mm -hmm. Especially, I, I don't want to take nobody else dying of obesity. To me, that's insane. You died because you... You ate yourself to death. You kept consuming so much food you you were you were eating to live but not living to eat if that you were living to eat but not eating to live there you go there you go yeah i found it i found it but that but that's that's a huge problem in this, that's a huge problem in this country like especially when we go to poor black and brown neighborhoods it's food deserts. But, it, yeah, mm -hmm. but is it harder to eat healthy when you are poor? I mean, no. I think, I think it's, it depends I, where you are. I it think is. it's, I, I, and no. I, I, I would answer that. I think it's harder to pay <laughs> like, for all these ridiculous <laughs> medical bills. I think it's harder to start burying people because they got the sugar, mm -hmm. you know? So I would implore people mm -hmm. just to cut half of what they're spending on processed foods and put half of that into fruits and vegetables okay, and, go, and water. Go ahead, Taryn. I agree. It's a good direction. It's a good way to go forward. <laughs> Even if you feel like you're someone who can't completely cut, reducing, like, okay, as well what he said before is like the shaming thing. I feel like a lot of vegans, when they first turn vegan, they're very hurt by, if it's not about health, it's about, you know, the animals. They're very hurt by what they've discovered you know they've discovered that these animals are put through all these situations they don't want them to be and it really you really end up taking on that kind of feeling for yourself and it becomes this weird uncomfortable space inside you and you start kind of leeching it it starts leeching out and you start throwing it on other people like go vegan you monster go vegan <laughs> do you know what the animals go through so i feel like when you first start off people then do tend to shame meat eaters um 
but as time goes on I've noticed a lot of people don't shame meat eaters as much and they just are chill and just like do their own thing and enjoy themselves in veganism and um it's not about shame anymore it's about education it's about educating the masses and not getting so butthurt over single people <laughs> who want to be stubborn <laughs> and not even give you a chance to speak about or listen to you if that makes sense i think um so the idea that we have around veganism or plant-based diets and how they've been branded has been centered in whiteness yeah. and i think that that has yeah. been and, and that's been you know not to our fault that is to you know the gatekeepers of these kind of health institutions and this kind of education around what we eat and i think for me you know like i'm a country girl born in ohio like like raised on like neck bones all that but now like after so after some education after like just trying to understand more uh more, more thoroughly like how food affected my body mm -hmm. um especially after seeing you know uh one grandmother die from mm -hmm. the sugars one another mm -hmm. die from heart disease and like you know all of these yeah and like i'm guessing the sugars they're talking about is diabetes you know i've been in the same situation i've had family like that i've had family die through the sugars so it's understandable like it's real like it's taking us down for real it's really taking oh, yeah. us down and um like you said like not to shame anyone but i think that we definitely like there needs to be more um more access to education around different mm -hmm. kinds of diets and different kind of ways that we can eat healthy in different kinds of ways that um we can um understand the things that we put in, into our bodies, especially in uh, impoverished black and brown neighborhoods, because like me and Jazz were talking earlier, like all you see is McDonald's in the hood. Mm -hmm. That's all you food see, desert. the food deserts. Desert. Desert. And then you go to the grocery store, You go if you go to a, a grocery store in Brownsville right now, the mm -hmm. vegetable section is gonna look rotten. It's moldy. If it's, yeah. it's gonna look moldy. Yeah, and harder. when it's not, it's gonna be pumped with steroids, pesticides yes. or whatever. Yes. But when you go to like a Trader Joe's in Williamsburg, they don't have Trader Joe's in the hood. Yeah. Trader Joe's is probably the most affordable. It's the reason why I'm able to eat, you know, a more plant-based diet That's because like where I'm able to find cheaper <laughs> vegetables that are actually, you know, good and not like supposedly not, you know, pumped with all this shit. So it, it, there's definitely a privilege going on uh, in this conversation and how we approach these kinds of diets. Do you know what? I feel like even just being in the UK, like I feel sorry for people who live in America. Even if you have money, I feel like that kind of side of the world, the vegetables and the food system is just not, not to say it's better, it's any better here. I feel like it's a bit better than America at least. And I'm hoping that doesn't change with Brexit. I'm hoping. Oh my god, please, please don't ruin our food. Don't ruin our fruits and vegetables. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I feel like America doesn't really have good quality of food, which is kind of sad. Uh, because their healthcare system is not free. And that ain't great. Whereas here, it's like, the food is better. I feel like healthier I feel like and over time you know everything's becoming more and more vegan um however over there it's not the case and we also have free healthcare so even if we do eat ourselves to death or to close to death we have free healthcare to support us and you know give us fillings in our teeth when we eat too much sugar or you know it's pretty much hatchies I know, we pay for the dentist, never mind. <laughs> but healthcare, other healthcare is free. Thank you, Tara. Go ahead, Juice. Um, I'm representing <laughs> for all the unhealthy eaters out here that love oh, meat right. and love it in big quantities. <laughs> and I, I went vegan for a month because I was like, you know what? I want to be healthy. I want to feel energy. And it was the worst month of my life. I See, it's still, it's still all about diet. It's still all about health.
I really hope they go on to other subjects because no, it's not really a full conversation about should black people go vegan if it's not. I was tired, I was cranky, I was poor. Okay. <laughs> Transitioning uh, phase. And I looked these up. I was I looking up recipes, cheap them. vegan, cheap All that. Right. I spent more money in a month than I probably spent on my college education. It was so expensive. I had to run all these stores to find these things. Everything has dairy in it. Everything has sugar. Everything has all this stuff. And it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. People were begging me, were begging me to eat meat. And that's why I agree with what people are saying that everything's not for everybody. I do believe you have moderation. But I, I personally believe that some vegans are a little, a little looped because all of the chemicals from them plants are good. Ah! And the meat is not balancing out well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> uh, uh, do you know what's so funny? Like, the people who eat meat and stuff, what about in the future when there's still people eating meat and it's very small amount and everyone else is vegan and we end up seeing a new normal of how people interact and think and feel and stuff? It's just something I always thought about because I'm like, people do say vegans act different and think different um the longer they stay vegan they get a bit loopy or whatever but maybe that's just a normal vegan brain maybe because of all the, the all the torture they've seen on video and all the food that they're eating that's making them feel like ah like too much energy <laughs> that was funny though <laughs> opposite experience because I've had the opposite experience because the reason why I decided to be a pescatarian is because I was not ready to be a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the reason why is because my sister got diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And the doctors told her to stop eating meat. Mm -hmm. So you know, my curious mm -hmm. self was like, hmm, why would they tell her to stop eating meat? Yeah. So then I decided to start doing my research. And then I, I just stopped eating meat cold turkey because it was enough evidence that everybody can find out. As, so so to the point, yes. what's that? Can we say animals oh, sorry. You stop eating animals? Sorry, I keep pausing. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. It's gonna take me forever to get through this video. I'm definitely gonna have to do a part two. I maybe maybe you guys don't know. If it's your first time here, I am a cancer survivor. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> I had cancer, and through my research, I saw two two main factors that feed your body cancer basically and that is sugar and meat after I found out I had cancer a big part of like my whole change was probably to do with that but I never actually made the jump and actually stopped eating meat until I watched the videos of the animal abuse whereas before I was like getting I was being introduced to veganism and stuff like that and I started to eat less meat and I was like, oh, maybe I should just, you know, meat is not good for me, blah, blah, blah. Even though I was a vegetarian for a long period of time and then I started eating, like, chicken again. No, was it just tuna? I don't even remember. I ate little bits of chicken and little bits of tuna and then I was just like, you know what, I've seen these animals being abused. But yeah, basically when I first started getting introduced to veganism, I basically was also at the same time researching ways that you can avoid cancer because i had cancer yo i didn't want to make it worse yo <laughs> so yeah i relate to his sister and his whole research on the cancer and it's true if you are at risk of having cancer if you have cancer in your family you should stop eating meat at least red meat like get rid of that stop it just stop it now red meat needs to go first Okay, animal, animal, animal protein. Yeah, that's fine. No, because you're still eating fish. Yeah. yeah. You're eating an animal. Sorry, yeah. yeah. That's fish. So, 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 so meat and fish. Well, fish is not considered a meat. So, that's what I said. That's yeah, yeah. So, fish is not meat. Something in particular. Yeah, he said. He said although they're they're not able to say it, they believe that there is a link between 
cancers, especially sarcomas and fatty tissue cancers, yeah. and and, eat, and processed meat. Process yeah. yeah. And it's been yeah. yeah. proven as well. Yeah. And, 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 the, and, the, and the, the bigger point is that I think that I think that we should take a look at this because if you are a person who has the intel to know, because my sister had a really 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 rough time with giving up meat. Mm -hmm. We would be like, baby, we want you to live. Mm -hmm. right. Just give yourself a chance. And she was really addicted. So I want to talk to, about addiction. Mm -hmm. And to, mm -hmm. to kind of come for you a little bit, Juice, is that I actually think that we're addicted to meat. I think that yep. I, I think we're addicted to, addicted to the chemicals, the taste, and all that kind of stuff, the preservatives, yeah, additives, to meat. So much so that you have the information that it will kill you, and you eat it anyway. Now, we have these conversations all the time about doing this to your body, getting butt injured. I'm not saying it's the same thing. But I am saying that it, well, you may know that your life is in danger, but we do it anyway. How is this not an addiction? How is this not something to take a closer look at? So that's my challenge to mm -hmm. the I'm going to let my sister go. Go ahead, Dr. Jessica. Oh. Yes. 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 I'm going to cut the video and jump into a part two because this is a long ass video and I'm only 17 minutes in. <laughs> Well, let her talk. Let her talk. Well, um, I just want to say that food is information, and this is something that indigenous yes. people and people of the non-Western world has always known. Uh, scientists and researchers are now looking through the lens of uh, nutrigenomics, which is just the study of how nutrition affects our genes, and they're realizing now that genes do um, certain nutrients especially when food is breaking down biochemically, can affect gene expression, mm. which means basically turning on and off certain genes that can be beneficial to us, optimizing our health, um, or detrimental causing disease. Mm -hmm. So with this in, in, um, in mind, you recognize that we're all genetically different, and that as we celebrate this biodiversity, we recognize that what's good for person A may not be good for person B, and right. vice versa. And so when we think about it, there's so many different diets. There's like the Mediterranean diet, the ketogenic diet, vegan and vegetarian diet. And I would just implore people who are trying to embark in a new journey to partner up with a nutritionist that's knowledgeable in the field or a healthcare professional that really knows about nutrition. And if you are not partaking in meat products, uh, I would recommend taking vitamin B12. I'm pretty sure you guys, yeah. vegans and vegetarians know that. Yeah. And it's yes, it's important for our nervous system yeah, and there. production of blood cells <laughs> and calcium. There's alternative forms of calcium. You don't have to get it through dairy. You can get it through like broccoli and almonds. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously making sure you're getting your omega-3s if you're um, not taking in fish. Um, you can supplement. With I do it every day with my cheeses. And when I want to talk about meats, yes, there is research that shows that processed meats are linked to colorectal cancer. Um, and when we think of processed meats, we think more we think more of like bacon and um, meats that are have a lot of preservative nitrites. I love bacon. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that is true. And people who intake large quantities of red meat. Now, with that being said, I said if you do eat meat, I would recommend getting meat that is um, antibiotic-free, um, mm -hmm. grass-fed, organic. And there are parts of the world, in the blue, I mean, blue zone meat, regions, where people live into the hundreds and they still eat meat. Mm -hmm. They just yeah. eat it, it. They eat it in moderation, maybe three to four or five times a month, and they're small portions, and it's clean. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah. 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 So, I thought you were with me for so a second. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Great job. Go ahead. I wanted to ask really quickly, like in, in school, did you get like a course on nutrition that was extensive and knowledgeable? Because oftentimes I feel like doctors just prescribe and they don't offer like like actual things to prevent? Well, that's a really good question. In my medical school, we did just have a two-week course in nutrition. However, it is true, a lot of medical schools don't provide that. Um, they're actually getting a little bit better about that. Um, but yeah, it's not really standard. So a lot of the knowledge I know is through my own um, seeking this information and studying it. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Go ahead, Ashley. Um, I would say that one that it sounds like everyone is more like a war on our relationship with food and how food is raised here in America rather than a war on actual meat. Um, I think you're talking about the, when vegans talk about their diet, they're comparing it to American diet, which is inherently unhealthy and based in excess. Mm -hmm. So that kind of mm -hmm. drives their narrative 
when it's, I don't think it's the most healthy of all the other diets if you, com if you compare it to like ovio vegetarians, lacto ovio vegetarians, pescatarians, it's not even necessarily at the top when you compare it to the other plant-based diets as well. So I just want to be careful that with the veganism, it's kind of like going from one extreme to the next. The American diet is extreme on one end and then the veganism is extreme on the other end. And what happens I mean, it's is, not really. yes, it depends I understand what that the type of vegan you are. If you eat junk food feeding, you're going to be pretty much the same as the American diet, but obviously healthier because it's just plants. Because you, you take out the meat factor, which is carcinogenic and la 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 la. But if you're talking about like a whole food, plant based, or like even a raw vegan, that's, that's definitely the other side of the spectrum. There's an association with um cancer and disease with meat and meat products but being vegan is causes a reduction not necessarily a cure right. and i'm scared for black people that we have um a strained relationship with the american health mm -hmm. care system and that we'll run to veganism and i've met a few extreme veganisms vegans like um alkaline vegans mm -hmm. who feel like they can cure themselves why is that extreme I'm pretty sure alkaline veganism is basically the same as Ital food, which is like the Rustas eat. Is it Rustas? Jamaica, all of the, all of the Caribbean countries. So not all of them, but certain countries in the Arab Caribbean. I can't remember. I think it's just Jamaica. I can't remember. Or maybe one of those islands. And Ital food is alkaline, and it's been a diet for a very, very long time i don't actually know how long to be honest but i've seen that if i've seen a tal food i'm probably saying it wrong but eat tal so it's i-t-a-l i've seen a tal food from like when i was a kid like ages ago i've seen it so even before i didn't, knew anything about veganism so wait let me actually see when did it breadfruit what the hell is breadfruit? Oh, that sounds delicious. Ital is vital. Is it Ital? Is that how you say it? Sorry, I'm out of breath. I ran up the stairs. Oh, it's a vegetarian diet. Is it alkaline? Anyways, I thought Ital was like a vegan, but maybe it's a... I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I clearly got it wrong <laughs> maybe i don't know i think i know what i was saying but clearly not of certain things cure themselves of cancer cure themselves of asthma so on and so forth when um they need to seek professional help mm -hmm. and they need to see a doctor instead of being at home trying to cure themselves of ailments that they really need to be hospitalized for so thank you actually yeah i feel like like what i was saying before with the healthcare system in America, I guess looking towards the vegan diet as a cure for all is not great because it's not a cure for all. <laughs> At first, like when I started reading up about veganism, it was around the time when you had the freelies and all this kind of stuff talking about, and all the, you know, all the, I hate saying the color of people, but it was a very white dominated, uh, area on social media of vegans and they were all basically saying the same thing if you eat a vegan diet you're going to be perfectly healthy it's going to cure this it's going to cure that it's going to cure and a lot of vegans around the time i went vegan and it, i didn't really go for health as i said i made the switch because of the animals but health was part of like what i was being like yeah beneficial for me bonus for me um but yeah it was part of the factor to why i went as well and sorry Duke's drinking his water behind me <laughs> and it can be a thing where if you like my situation I had cancer I was sick I was still having issues after I got treatment for cancer and I wasn't getting any help from the doctors and they didn't know what was wrong with me couldn't figure it out I'm still seeing them to this day which is like six years five six years later and I was looking for cures for myself and you know thinking what can i do i went sugar free i went vegan <laughs> you know but i went vegan for the animals just saying it but 
You know what I mean? <laughs> it played a factor in the health situation. Can they... I, won't, I don't know if they're going to... I hate chemicals. Um, <clears throat> hello, everyone. You know, I was, uh, was going to say, um, I've been a, a vegan for five years now. Um, I started a YouTube channel for street dance videos. We would cover events and stuff, so I had to travel all over the world. And uh, I've been in 26 countries now. I had steak in every country I went to back before I was a vegetarian or vegan or whatever to call it. And um, I never really like cared too much about the morality of it because that didn't seem to be something that would affect me on a personal level. Even when I was a child, though, at 12 years old, if I saw a, a crate of uh, lobsters that you get to choose before you would kill it to eat it right at the restaurant. I thought that was kind of weird, but it wasn't something that actually connected because I didn't have to kill the animal myself, right? So that's the first thing. Um, I would like to, st I had four points when I came here. Two of them I'd like to say now. One of them is that there's a macro way to look at this situation, which is that if you're, f I'm from California. Hey. When you drive from, <laughs> when, you, uh, when you drive from Oakland to, to, uh, to Los Angeles or to San Diego, you'll smell before you even see the, the grassless farms that are of, you know, countless cows that are bred just to be fed to us. They keep mm -hmm. the men, you know, in the cattle farms where they try to feed them GMO corn and wheat and stuff. And the women are kept in dairy farms. I call them women, they're heifers or whatever. They're kept in the dairy farms where they're meant to just be pregnant all the time. There's artificial insemination uh, as they, they breed them. Finally to be getting into more than more just more diet. Milk and stuff. We mm. drink that milk from the same women who are injected with estrogen to keep them pregnant longer. They cry when their babies are taken away and stuff. Like, but all that's still the morality conversation, right? And I honestly, I say that's a macro conversation because factory farming has led towards climate change in a lot of ways. People will talk about methane gas created by the cows. That's, you know, 25 times more harmful and, and more uh, powerful. Do you know what? We're gonna come back. Part two, there might be part three because you know I'm slow at this. And there's a noisy car outside, so Come back for part two in a few days or something, depending on how long I take to edit this. And we're going to get into the ethical side. I don't know if they're going to continue this conversation on the ethical side of things or if they're going to stick to the diet. But so far, this guy is like, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I tip my hat to you. Um, he's going to the moral side of things. So we'll start again with his part and discuss it a bit. But this noisy freaking bin truck is coming so thank you for watching and make sure you like subscribe and i will see you in the next one love like come back for part two